Hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to implement ambient shading into our metal shading language engine. In the last episode, we talked about Fong shading and how it's made up of ambient, diffuse, and specular lighting. Uh, in this episode, it's just going to be ambient, and then we'll do diffuse and specular in another episode. If you know anything about the Fong shading formula, ambient is the easiest part of the formula to implement. So this one won't be too hard. That's what she said. So yeah. Let's go. All right, to give you a quick example of ambient lighting, as you see before you, there is this gorgeous sphere with one point source of light that's from the top right of the scene and it's facing down onto our object, creating this back ambient value. Now, if this ambient value was zero, the back of this object would be completely black and you wouldn't be able to see it. The only part that you would be able to see is the diffuse section, which is this somewhat lit area and this really bright specular value that's what you'd be able to see if there was no ambient but since there is ambient we will be able to see some sort of a back lit area and basically what ambient is it's just environmental lighting you know there's other lights that might be bouncing off the walls in this scene that are bouncing onto the back of our object and we don't want it to be in a completely dark scene we want to add some sort of an ambient value to the backs of our objects so this is where ambient lighting comes into play now, in the last episode, we talked about this Fong shading formula and how it's made up of ambient, diffuse, and specular. And then I told you that this craziness is the same exact thing. Uh, but in this episode, we aren't going to be using all of it. Um, we need to get rid of the specular aspect because we that's some craziness that we... I told you this is easy. <laughs> specular is not easy. We get rid of the diffuse because we're not doing diffuse which leaves us with ambient. Now, from the Fong identifiers, we aren't gonna need these values in this formula. And from you know the vector standpoint, well, we don't need any of those. Let's just burn them. Uh, but there's one other small little change I wanna make to this shading formula. Well, I'm gonna get rid of this little plus sign. I'm gonna move this part of the ambient function into our for loop. And then I'm gonna make this the light intensity at a, the current light which leaves us with this formula. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's just other parts of this architecture that I don't wanna have to implement for this series. You can go ahead and try to figure that on your own. But in this case, I'm just gonna move the ambient calculation inside the for loop to make it a lot easier. But basically this is all it is. To figure out the intensity of Fong for at least the ambient, all we need to do is take the epsilon of the material times the light ambient intensity. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Hopefully when we code it, it will make a lot more sense. So let's dive into that now. Okay, so uh, from the last episodes that we've been doing, we have this model loading of a cool little cruiser. Uh, it's got the, it, it's technically being lit right now, but every single light is the value one. It's just returning one. There's no calculations being done. It's just returning the color, the base color that was passed in. And if we zoom out a little bit on the scene, you'll notice that there's a light at the top of the scene that represents a point of light data, but there's no actual calculations being done from this light source to this cruiser. So that's what we're gonna do in this episode. We're gonna implement that ambient aspect. Now, before I get started and doing architectural CPU stuff, I wanna go into the ambient because most people, a lot of people who come in here are probably just trying to figure out how to implement ambient shading into their engine. So we're gonna first jump into the GPU side and work with our shaders. So go ahead and go to graphics, shaders and we're going to start with share.metal which contains our types for our metal files and we're going to come all the way down here to material and light data now the first value i'm going to add on material is going to be is lit and that's going to be a boolean because we want to tell whether or not an object is lit so that we don't do calculations on the objects we don't want to and we do on the ones we do so add is lit and we'll just add an if statement really quickly the second value i want to add is ambient because I said ambient, the ambient part of the Fong shading is ambient times light data dot ambient intensity. Boom, I have my two values, but there's a couple more things I wanna add on light data, and that's gonna be like color. We want our lights to be able to have a different color if we need to, and I'm also gonna have a brightness. Because what if we want our lights to be brighter? So, now that our two structs are put together like we want to let's go ahead and jump into basic shaders now there's one issue that i need to point out with this current system and that's that we're taking in this light data's array this pointer to light data's but there's no way of me telling how many light data's are contained in this array and i couldn't figure out for the life of me how to find the count of our light data's so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to pass in an integer that is the reference to our light count 
and I'm gonna send that right alongside our light datas. And if you can figure out how the hell to pass in the, or use light count, from, figure out light count from this array, let me know in the comments because I don't know how to calculate this light count inside of this shader. You'll notice that I set this equal to buffer two. Well, that means that we need to update our light datas to be at buffer three. And when we go through the CPU side, we'll need to also update that as well. But this is gonna be the basic format of all of our parameters that are coming into our basic fragment shader. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna code out some stuff and then we'll talk about what I coded out after this so you don't have to wait around for me to code things. All right, now that I have this part coded out, we can talk all about it. And this is the only part of the entire function that I updated, so just focus here. First thing I did is check to see if the material is lit because we don't wanna do calculations on things that aren't lit. Um, so we just wrap it with an if statement, else we just return the, the color that was originally calculated from up here. Else, uh, say we want to light it, which most often will be the case. Uh, first thing we do is create a total ambient. Now this total ambient is gonna be the sum of all of the ambient calculations combined. So we're gonna take that epsilon, which is this for loop right below it, and summate all of the total ambient together. So that's that part of the calculation. And first thing we're gonna do is grab the light datas at zero, which is basically in the calculation, the M value or the M light, the mph light in our array. And we're gonna calculate the ambient from that. Uh, we're gonna create the ambientness which is just the material.ambient times light data dot ambient intensity. Now this is what you see inside of the formula to generate ambient and we could stop here, but I do wanna add on top of that the light data's color because we want the ambient to be whatever color it is that we are receiving from the light and we're gonna summate that together. Um, and then all I do is I sum up the total ambient with that ambient color and now we have a total ambient made up of all the ambient material and light data that we have, which means I can create the Fong intensity. Remember I said it's ambient diffuse specular. Now we'll implement these ones in the future, but for now we're just gonna have total ambient. And then we're gonna multiply color times Fong intensity um, that we've generated right here, which is made up of total ambient. And that's gonna give us a color with a reduced ambient value. And that's it, that's all there is to it when it comes to the ambient lighting. Now let's jump over to the CPU side and start doing some engine work. So the first place I'm gonna start is going to be in the managers under light manager. And that's because right now in our fragment shader, we have our light count coming through now and our light datas coming in at buffer three and we need to add light count coming in to uh, buffer two. But before I go into that light manager, let's go to core types, metal types, and I need to add the extension, oop, extension of int 32 before we jump in there because the count that we're gonna be passing down to the GPU is an int 32. So now we have our int 32, we can go into, let's close that, into managers, light manager, and let's look at this function, set light data. So when we're setting the light data array, we're setting it at index three now, and we are going to now need our light count, which we'll set equal to light datas dot count. And then we'll also use this new light count right here because we can. All right, so to pass it to the GPU, it's a simple render and command encoder call of set fragment bytes at the light count reference. We're gonna pass it in as an int 32.size and the index is now two. So buffer two, buffer three, that's what we're doing here. And this should all compile. Now there's one small minor mistake that I haven't actually told you guys about that I made. Um, and that is right here, we're saying light data.size. This should be light data.stride because we use size, like in this case, we're doing an individual number. We're saying light count, which is one integer. But in this case, down here with light data dot stride, we're striding over light data array. And so there's like a lot of padding and there's different, I'm not gonna dive into it right now, but there's a lot of 
different padding variables that go into the stride aspect of it that wouldn't go into the size aspect. So we need to use stride over arrays and size over individual values. And that'll fix up, like if you were having issues before, adding stride here should fix that. Now that our light manager's all taken care of and we're passing that light count, let's jump out and go add some of these types to our engine. So just like in the GPU side, let's go to types, metal types, just like on the GPU, we now need to have a var is lit right here. And that's gonna be a bool. And we're gonna set that equal to true by default. So everything is lit. And then for, uh, we also need to add for material a var of ambient, which is going to be a float three. And I'm gonna set that equal to float three and we're gonna set it to a smaller number to begin with. So something like 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0.3 so it's going to be 30 percent of whatever current values going through will be calculated so ambient is technically 30 percent right now uh, for light data we now need to take in var color which will equal a float three we're going to set that let's just make it a white light so one 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 and we're also going to need to add that ambient intensity which will be a float, and I'm gonna set that just equal to one, so we're not gonna mess with that ambient intensity yet. But now, our materials and light data uh, match our shader's light data values. I forgot to add a brightness, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that as well. Don't you forget to add it, and I'm gonna set that equal to a float of one zero, so the brightness is just gonna be the one value. It's gonna be a scalar of one now. So let's go to game object and go down here to the material properties. Um, the first thing I'm noticing is we have set color on our game object. We shouldn't call set color uh, because you know there's a light color and a material color. So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refactor this to say set material color instead of just set color. And then on our light, which our light object, which implements light game object, will say set light color. So this won't be set material, it'll be set material color. and that looks better. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some getters and setters here. Um, you don't need to watch me code those, but I'm gonna add some getters and setters. I'll be right back. All right, so here's the setters and the getters that I created for our ambient value. And uh, yeah, so we have a set with material ambient, which is just a float three. We'll just set it to a, using a float three. We can also do set material ambient using a float. We can just scalar it, and that will set it to the float three of whatever that scalar is. Uh, and then we have the ability to add our material, material ambient, which means we can increase it or decrease it if we really wanted to. And then the last one, we're gonna just have a little getter that will return a float three of material.ambient. We also need the ability to set is lit, so I'm gonna add that real quick. Okay, so there's the, uh, you know, being able to set if that is the, the, the current material we're working on is lit. So now we have the ability to set the material color and set the ambient color. Let's go to our light object and also do some sort of an extension down here of our light object and add some of those getters and setters. And I'm gonna do all those real quick. So like I said, I'll be right back. All right, so now we have the ability to set and get the light color and the ambient intensity of our light objects. One thing I did forget to add is the light brightness. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that real quick and then we'll move on to whatever the hell I'm talking about right now. And boom, uh, so don't forget to add this, I did. Um, go ahead and add it and moving forward. Let's go ahead and close game objects and go into our sandbox scene. Now right now our sandbox scene is kind of boring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spice it up, code it around and make it look a lot better. So give me one moment. All right, now we have a cool looking scene with three different lights, red, white, and blue, go America and they're shining down onto our cruiser. Um, we see we have red and blue, so it creates this purple ambient color, about 30% of ambientness applied. So this is gonna be the back of our object. We're gonna have some sort of like lighting calculations to figure out you know, more you know, realistic lighting. But for now we have ambient calculation. Simple, right? So yeah, let's dive into the code real quick and talk about how I did this. Uh, the first thing I did was I created a debug camera. 
I set the position of that on the z-axis to 6, so it's kind of just back. Uh, and then I created three sun objects, left, middle, right. I set those ones to the respective color on both their material and light color. Um, and then I set the material on them to not be lit because I didn't want them interacting with any other lights in the scene. And then I just added them to the scene. It was pretty easy. Uh, last thing I did was I set the cruiser rotation to be a little bit at an angle of 0.3 radians because I just want it to be facing the camera. I don't want to have to like move it when I first open it. So yeah, this is going to be the scene we're working with. I hope you guys liked it. I'll see you next time.